Glory to God. All right, let's get into the word of God. We are in the word of God already, so I just want to encourage you some more. Genesis chapter 21. So I want to know about dealing with dealing with discouragement. Dealing with what? Discouragement. Dealing with discouragement. And, and the reason I'm dealing with this is, I, I'll show you why. The reason why I'm say, talking about this with discouragement is um, um, it's something that we never get to address. Dealing with discouragement. Have you been discouraged before? All right. Only a few people I know have not been discouraged before. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 21, verse 14. Genesis chapter 21, verse 14. Somebody say, Hallelujah! So, w- dealing with discouragement, it can come as a lot of things. Number one, it can be a situation that is not changing. It can be a situation that is not changing. Number two, it can be, it can be life problems. Number three, it can be people discourage, doing something that discourage you. So, we're going to read the story about Haggai today. I want to say to you, please go back and watch first second or third service where i talk about the inward weakness and again of the holy spirit and in addition to that make sure you watch spontaneous worship I, we've done one worship like this if you just want to pray just play it don't play it if you don't want to pray because once you play it you will catch fire yeah do, do, you have, do you have the clip of the video let me know if you have the clip of the video maybe after the after the sermon i can play it for you all right so what's read about hey guy hey guy is the hey guy was sarah's um help that um sarah took to sleep with abraham and they had a child from it the bible says an Abraham rose up early in the morning. So when Agar had the child, just background, when Agar had a child called Ishmael, Ishmael is the father of the Arabs. Isaac is the father of the Jews or the Israelites. So when Agar had Ishmael, you know, they began to clash. Agar felt as if my madam doesn't have a child for my master. May I have the child? So I have the bigger say in this family. So let's look at what the Bible says. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and the bottle of water and gave it unto Agar. So by this time they were fighting and Abraham was like, I don't want to fight with my wife. You have a child. Just go with your child. Let's forget about you. And the Bible says this, and put it on her shoulder and the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Bathsheba. Oh, that's great. So she departed and wandered. And when the water was spent, so the first thing is, is verse 14. This is what happens when you are discouraged. The first thing is that she was wandering away. Once you, this reason I'm about discouragement. Once you're discouraged, you stop being intentional about life. You become unintentional about life. You start drifting. You start drifting. You, you forget your purpose. You forget you had the plan. You forget all of that. You forget you had the purpose. You forget you had the plan. You just start drifting. You just start drifting. The Bible says this. The Bible says in verse 14, And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and water and gave it unto her guy. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness. Just start drifting. And some of you are here. You used to be very intentional about life. You used to be very focused on your prayers. What's happening to you? You become discouraged and you start drifting. I want to ask you a question. If you stop doing what you're doing, do things get better or they get worse? So, because you've not been able to get the money for the business, you're discouraged and you stop talking to people, will you get better or to get worse? You know, and the reason I'm saying so, everybody, you know what I'm saying so, I don't think you're doing all you can to have the results you want, but you're telling yourself you're doing all you can. We keep telling yourself, you keep saying, I've done everything. You have not done everything. You know, every time someone asks me that, eh, Pastor, I'm tired of life. I've done everything. I always say, okay, hold on. Let's count how many things you've done. And guess what? I've not seen someone that can count five. Because the exhaustion is more of a mental state than a reality. So someone says, I- I'm tired of asking money for... How many of you are tired of re- trying to raise money for your business? Raise up your hands. Let me see. Raise up your hands. Come on, come on. How many of you are tired of raising money for me? Raise up your hands. Raise up your hands. Let me see. Raise, raise, raise. How many of you have asked more than 10 people? Keep your hands up. You've asked more than 10 persons. Did you see everybody that raised up their hand? Only one person said, I've asked more than 10 persons. Out of everyone here, okay, maybe two now. I said, you know, but, but, but actually you're tired. So what happens is this, once you get the script, you start wondering, you stop being intentional, you stop your prayers, you stop your Bible study, you stop taking the steps that will lead you to a big vital miracle. For example, some of you are discouraged about dating, so you stop going out, you put your Instagram on, on private, you, you, put, you put everything on private, how are we going to find you? You 
Is that just one people disturbing me? Don't you know that it's disturbing that leads to marriage? Praise God. May they disturb you. Because it's among the disturbance that you find someone to marry. Is that not true? She stopped. Some of, some of you, some of you, some of you, your spiritual life. Maybe you are working in ministry and you're not seeing some result. You just stop. The Bible says she departed and wandered. Wandered means that she had no plan. She was just going around. And the thing about wandering is this. Let me tell you something. Wandering is exhausting because you are not making progress. It's exhausting. And some of you, you know what has happened to you? You are wandering through life. I'm telling you the truth. You're wandering through life. You you you're not. You don't have any particular place you want to go again you have forgotten your dreams you have forgotten your vision you have forgotten what you want to do you're just going from day to day what and that's why you can sit down and watch netflix for five hours you can go and see a friend and sit down there for eight hours and the reason why is because let's not dream again and when, and someone challenges you, but at the root of the challenge is what discourage. One of the things that happen when you're discouraged is this: most of the time when you're discouraged, you pick up a bad habit that brings you fulfillment and happiness. Let me tell you some, something bad, not bad, but something that I should not be doing. Every time you see me eating a lot of sugar, something I'm tired. So I'll just me, you just say, "Oh, like, can I have chocolate? Can I have sweet? I'm just eating sugar, sugar. I'm tired." And the reason why I'm saying so is that when people discourage, people will start doing useless activity to experience success. So, oh, I finished the movie. How does that help your life? You know, they say, I want to visit. So you're doing all of those things. Do you know all of those things? So the Bible says that she was wondering. So question is it, um, this is my first question to you. What are the things you're doing because you're not experiencing success, but you're doing so that you can have some fulfillment? So that's the first question. So the Bible says she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. Verse 15. Verse 15. The Bible says, and next thing, because she was not intentional, even her resource was spent up. And most of you, because you're not intentional, even your resource, and your resource is not just material resources, even your emotional resources are what? Are depleted. And you are in a worse place than when you started. The Bible says, and she cast a child. Did you see what she did? She put a child under one of the shirts. Verse, verse 16. Verse 16. And she went and sat down under and against him as it was a bow, a bow shot. And she said, let me not see the death of my child. And that's what I'm going to. Did you see her thought? Her thought now became negative. She began to think of all the worst things that can happen to her. Don't let me see my child die. 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 After all, I know nobody will marry me. I'll just adopt the baby. That's it. After all, I know that this and this and this. After all, I'll just settle. I'm going to move it to one remote village. And that's it. She began to have very negative thoughts. So, for example, before the end of the year, we have maybe six more weeks. But, question, do you know that a lot of people are no longer pushing? They said the year is over. But a lot can happen in six weeks. So, why have you stopped pushing? What is wrong? You don't stop pushing because there's no time. You stop pushing because you become discouraged. So, because you're discouraged, you look at the rest of the year from a negative perspective. The Bible says, she said, I will put my child somewhere here. Let me ask the first question. And I'm going to come back. I'm going to do this fast. Let me ask the first question. When you're discouraged, what are the things you stay in that are not helping you, but that's what you do when you're discouraged? Yeah. Let, let the lady in glasses answer. Yeah, this lady in glasses. I saw her smile when I spoke about it. Yeah. Praise the Lord. You need to hold the microphone closer to your mouth. You eat a lot of food. Yeah. And when you gain weight, you hate yourself for it. Yes or no? But when you, when you eat a lot of food, it makes you feel fulfilled when you're discouraged. Like, I'm, at least I'm a, I can't kill myself. What? Yeah? You sleep? Yeah. You forget about whatever. I want you to forget the problem disappears. You wake up and you what? And it's still there. Fantastic. Okay, what, what do you do when you're discouraged? What do you do that when you're discouraged? Yeah. Any other person? Yes, there's someone in the front here. Yeah. Any other person? What do you do when you're discouraged? On this side, there's a lady over there also. Yeah. G give her the microphone. Yeah, tell me. 
What do you do when discouraged, yeah? So I take up a new project, like I go to my friend, what do you need me to help you do? And I start to help them solve it. That's a very positive thing though. And I forget about my own. And when they bring it up, like, let's talk about it. I'm like, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. But that's a good thing. At least you're solving problems. That that's a very good thing. I would like to be your friend so you can be. <laughs> so, you know. But your friends will be praying that you have a lot of you very discouraged. So I can take on. Oh wow! Praise the Lord. Okay. What? What else? What else? Yeah. Tell me. Does it? Yes. Yes. Go ahead. I do play music. What? I, I'm sorry. I can't hear what you're saying. You don't have to do anything. Just have to hold the microphone closer to your mouth. Okay. Yeah. When I'm discouraged. You just have to hold the microphone closer to your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. When I'm discouraged, I do play music. You do play music. I, I said negative things you do, not let's, uh, let's go to negative ones. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, negative All right. ones. Yeah. Don't worry. Take your time. Take your time. Next person. Thank you. Okay. When I'm discouraged, I just think of the worst scenario that meant that. Okay. I just think of the worst possible thing that could happen at that moment and I would dwell on it. Even if that's not what, maybe even if that is not what is happening at the moment, I will just think of the worst possible thing and I will dwell on it and I will start crying. Then later on, it clears up and I'm like, oh, okay, it wasn't that deep. Why was I being this dramatic? The reason I'm asking you to share is that you need to look at your own personal experience and ask yourself, is this my experience? So when she's discouraged, she thinks of the worst case scenario. So you lose money and it's as if you lost your whole life. You lose a relationship and it's as if you got married again. A lot of you are married here, but when you had the breakup, you thought it was over. You lost money. The, you know, <laughs> let me give it, let me, let me, let me make you guys laugh. Many years ago, we used to do what all of us were fighting for financial freedom. All, all of us pastors. So we used to do this contribution, 15,000 naira every month. And we'll contribute. But it, our only that you collect it, well, 15 of us, you collect it. It was meant to be for 10 years. 15,000 every month for 10 years. But it's not as if you collect it. You, we use it to buy an asset. So we actually bought. So let me tell you who was in the group. Myself, I think, Nia, this one, yeah, Pastor Godman, Akinabi. This is many years ago. So one, one day recently, I saw Pastor Godman. I said, Pastor Godman, that's true. Where's our money? <laughs> Because he was the coordinator. He said, where's our money? He said, some one guy just ran away with it. <laughs> because I even remember that that time, we had bought like maybe two acres of land in Mangboro. You know, that kind of thing. That, that time, the land was very cheap in those Moe area. It was just a hundred thousand there. So we just contribute, contribute, and buy the land. Wow. And we we're just laughing. And I said, no, no, we have to find our money. And then I said, that, ah, ah, with all God has done for you, please leave this money and let us. <laughs> Glory to God. But I'm only telling you, when people look at what she says, she will think very negatively. Okay, one more person, please. One more person. Yeah, one more person. Yes, go ahead, ma'am. Yeah. Then I'll read the scripture to you. Yeah. So for me, I binge on movies. Like you what? Binge on movies. Like I watch movies, series. I stay in bed. So that's it. So the last time you did this, what happened exactly? Nothing really. You were um, not discouraged. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. So let's let's go on. I want to just jump quickly because of time. So we're talking about dealing with discouragement. So you can be discouraged about your health, about your marriage, about your finances, about all of those things. But I need to ask you when discouraged, am I doing something to fix it or you know I'm destroyed it? The next thing is this. See, the Bible says she sat over the hill, lifted up her voice and wept. Verse 17. Verse 17. Yeah. And God had the and God had what? Did you notice Hagar was not praying? God was looking for how to help her. But Hagar did not pray. It was the voice of the lad that the angel of God responded to. She didn't realize that an angel was there to give them a miracle. When, when you are discouraged, this is why you don't want to be in that place. What you can do to get out of that situation, you never do it. You end up doing what? Nothing. I know people that are so discouraged they don't pray about the things that discourage them. No 
laughing. The Bible says, and the angel heard the voice of the lad, and the angel called unto Haggai out of heaven and said, What I lay at the Haggai, fear not, for the Lord has heard the voice of the lad where he is. Like, as in God did not even respond, like Agar was not even trying to get God's attention. Then look at what the angel said. She was afraid of something. Verse 18. The Bible says this. Arise, lift up the hand and hold him. For I will make him a great nation. If you read the next verse, all of a sudden the angel told him, turn to the right hand side. You will see water. She was dying of thirst. But there was water next to her. But she couldn't see him. The Bible says, and God opened her eyes and saw a well of water. Question. The water was always there. Why couldn't she? The discouragement had closed her eyes. When you are discouraged, the very things that should bring you out, you will not see it. I'm telling you, when you're discouraged, you're discouraged. The very thing that should bring you out, you will not see. And so the question is this, how do I get from out of a state of discouragement? And that's where I want to really go. You'll get out of a state of discouragement by changing what you give your attention to. So for hey guy, our attention was the child is going to die. You change, if you're discouraged, just change what you give your attention to. I'll read the final scripture. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. Oh, glory to God. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 4. The Bible says this. Let's read together. But we have what? This treasure in earthen vessel. Let me, let me say first thing. There's something I missed out. I think a lot of people get discouraged because they don't have a realistic view of life. A lot of you say, I don't want life with trouble. Life without challenges is for those that are dead. You need to fix that in your mind. So the reason why you have challenges is because you are alive. And as long as you are alive, there will be challenges. So let's read. For we have this treasure in an earthen vessel that the excellence of the power may not be of God, but of us. Verse 8. Verse 8. See what it says. Want to go? We are what? We are troubled on every side. Yet what? not distress so he says we have trouble but we are not distressed he said we are what perplexed but not what in despair verse 9 he said we are persecuted but not what forsaken cast down but not what destroyed then the next thing is what why always bearing about in the body the dying of the lord jesus christ that the life also of christ may be made manifest in our body verse 11 Please, please go back go, 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 go back to verse 10 see is it always bearing our body the dying of Jesus Christ that the life see is focus maybe let's go back at it let's go back let's go from the beginning I, I've rushed it I've, I've rushed it yeah yeah see what it says it says we have this treasure in earthen vessel that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us he said this is the foundation he said when we go to trouble we always remind ourselves that we have treasure in earthen vessel question when you go to trouble what do you remind yourself of oh, that i'm stupid i'm foolish i'm not wise they remind themselves that i have treasure in earthen vessel you know what that means ever look up here thieves only attack places with treasures are you here you know i, I want to ask you how many of you have seen a thief rob in public primary school before you know why they don't rob that there's nothing there he said the reason why he said the reason why we come under attack is because there's treasure that is being looked for can i be honest with you the bigger the attack on your life the bigger the treasure inside let it sink if you are saying god why is all this thing happening to me you are looking at the wrong thing say to yourself lord what have you put inside me so much that makes the devil so terrified What have you put is what, what do I carry that make the devil terrified? Very powerful. Because you're wondering why is the devil paying so much attention to my life, attacking with this, attacking with that. The devil will not attack you if you are not consequential. I said to you, so I think the other day, I said, you only throw stones at trees with fruits. So when you see a tree and people are stoning the tree, they're only stoning the tree because there are fruits on it and they're hoping that by stoning the fruit can come down. If the tree was fruitless, nobody would stone it. 
So see what it says. He says, this, so imagine the whole story where trouble were perplexed. But the reason why, look at the mentality. The reason why trouble is God, there's treasure on the inside. So their focus was on the treasure. Your focus is on the trouble. So when your focus is on the treasure on the inside, you feel privileged that I'm going through life like this. But once your focus is on the trouble, you feel discouragement that life is working against you. See what the Bible says. It says, we have this treasure in the earthen vessel that the excellence of the power may be of God, not of us. Verse 8. See what it says. We are troubled on... That, see, it says, we're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Why are we not distressed? Because we understand we have what? Treasure on the inside. So I don't say, why are they doing all of this to me? I'm like, is my values that much that I'm getting so much attention? Someone says, Pastor, they spoke about me really bad on social media. Is my value that much that I can get so much attention? Question, are you focused on the treasure or focus on the trouble? The easy way to get discouraged is to focus on the trouble you get discourage. If you focus on the treasure, you get joyful. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So what do you have to do? Change what you pay attention to. Okay, can I have one or two people that are very discouraged right now? You came to service very discouraged and you don't know what's going on. I would like to speak with you just before we close the service. Yep, let's go. Hands up. Yeah, there's a lady in front here. I'll just take the lady right in front here. I, I don't want to, I'm, I'm hungry from yesterday. No, no, no. I want someone that is really, yeah, so that we can use your story to bless all of us. Yes, go ahead. Um, I got to Lagos last year. Yeah. Late last year. Then this year, I'm trying to move back to Ibadan because I feel like I got a job opportunity. Well, I'm so what very, is discouraging? Confused. I don't even know. No, yeah, confused is even discouraged. Okay. Confused, you need cancel and how to about it. That's I'll take another person's question. All right, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll take somebody. You want to go? Yeah, this guy. Yeah, go. So, what's your name? My name is Adams. Adams. Okay, go. So um, earlier this year, I became very discouraged. Why? So when you said... Um, Why did you become discouraged? Because of the uh, um, last concluded elections. Because of the elections? Yes. Okay, good, good. So how did they affect you personally? So you said something... No, no, no. no. You need to ask my question, yeah. So how did they affect you? About it? What discouraged you about it? Yeah. I, I, honestly, it got me demoralized. I, I agree. So what got you demoralized there? Because that was the first time in my life I ever brought out my heart. I'm, I'm new. I'm new in Lagos. Okay. I, I like. I got in, I'm interested in politics. I did everything. Yeah. I registered. I got my voter's card. Yeah. Did you didn't join a you join a party? I, uh, no, but I prayed. I you fasted. Pr- you, you you prayed. You fasted. Yes. That's great. So what got you discouraged exactly? I'm I'm saying this because what got you discouraged exactly? Because I I, I saw things unfairly done. Okay. It was unfair. Yeah. And what uh, was unfair exactly? The whole, the whole, the, the whole. You need to be specific. What was unfair? In my pulling, you lead the people. The election read. results were yes. manipulated. We were manipulated. Yes. Where? How did you know that? Because, because I, I, I for one. Yeah. My polling unit was checking Republic. Yeah. And your results were manipulated. Yes. It was, are you sure? Because you took it deeper before you answered that. Were your results in your polling unit manipulated? No. The, this is the truth. The truth is what Sam, was announced. A, 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 Adams. Alarms. 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 A, alarms. Alarms. Yes. Adams, right? Alarms. Ala- huh? Alarms. A L A M S. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, alarms. My challenge is that you're not answering my question. You're moving me like this, so you're confusing me. So I will not. There's nothing I can tell you because if I don't understand you, I can't respond. Except your opportunity is just to talk to the microphone and tell us that. No, my like opportunity it. is not. My opportunity, uh, my opportunity is to tell you yeah. reasons and discourage. Because yeah, yeah. So, so that I want to understand. So, so, so the reason why that I don't understand why you're discouraged now. Because you see people are reacting funny. I need to say something. Yeah. Ever since February, you said something. Mm. Now, once you get discouraged, you hardly pray about things you're discouraged about. 
After the elections, I stopped praying about Nigeria. I stopped praying for Nigeria. Honestly I totally, speaking. I totally understand. Yes. But my question to you is that what? It is not funny. Because no, 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 no. From Asaba, Listen, I'm going, from to take the, I'm going to take the microphone for you if you respond that way. I'm going to take the microphone. The reason why is that you're expressing yourself and nobody's thinking that, you know, everybody has their opinion to whatever they say. Okay. So you must respect their opinion. It's all right. It's all right. Yeah. Okay, so the question is this. What exactly got you discouraged? So your polling unit, was it rigged or maybe it wasn't rigged? Or maybe some other results were rigged? The presidential election, they let us finish. The gubernatorial election, people were bullied out. So people were bullied out. Yes, okay. so we didn't finish. So, so, so the, the the governorship, people were bullied out. Is that what it is, or yeah, the presidential? Yeah, like, like we didn't finish for the gubernatorial election. For the gubernatorial election, and that's what got you discouraged. Okay, that's great. That's great. Okay, so this is the way I look at it. Um, I'm discouraged because that's that's what happened. So I want to ask you, when you look at all of this. Could you control that as a person? I couldn't, but I, I believe that if people no, have... Just answer we, my question. No, I couldn't. Don't, don't, no. You couldn't. The okay. is no. Good. Let me tell you one secret to depression. An easy way to be depressed is to focus on what you cannot control. True. So if you want to be depressed, keep it as your focus. So if you're discouraged about this, let me tell you how I will process it. This is the way I look at it. How old are you? You're younger than you're, you're below 30, right? Yeah, I'm below 30. I, I, I can tell. The reason why is that you're too young to understand what the military reign was in Nigeria. I grew up young, old, a bit older than you, but we had military dictators. All this one, they say they are striking, they will just arrest them. You can be, if you write against the governor, they just pick you the next day. They, your family will not find you. So, this is what I think about. Lord, we are not yet there. We're on a journey. So, because you never experienced it, I'm like, yeah, it's nothing. But, you know, my father was in the police force, so I know what I'm talking about. People just disappear. People literally just disappear. I don't know if you ever remember that there was a time in this country that Asu was on strike for almost three years. Yeah. No, you didn't know that time. You, Asu. you heard about it. I never said one, three months. Oh. I said three to four years. People were people were in university for ten years, four year course. Come on, how many of you are older here? Because uh, you know, what are the older people here that know things like that? Yeah, people. Were, uh, is it not true? People ten years. I'm, I'm not saying to you that that does not discourage you. So the question is, how will you fix it? So look at me, Alams. So this is how you fix it. So the first thing is that I can't control. I can't control that, so I should not focus on it. What I also need to think about that, okay, we've had the election. It didn't turn out the way I wanted. But the person that is there right now, it might not be doing everything possible to be right. But I think our economy, in some ways, there seems to be a ray of hope. I never said there's hope. Oh. There seems to be a ray of hope. You know, so, so there seems to be a ray of hope. That is what I would dwell on. But because if you keep dwelling upon the, upon the past election, what can you do to change it? Nothing. Nothing. So you just continually make yourself what? Unhappy. So since February now, you have not prayed. People that won the election have prayed. People that did the election have prayed. People that lost the election have prayed. You that have no sin, you have not prayed. I, I did not say I, I do not pray. Uh, I just don't pray for Nigeria. Nigeria. Uh, people, I, I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you that it, it, the world keeps going on. Praise God. All right, thank you for that. Okay, can I take one more? Can I take one more? Something that is very, very... I need, so, I need someone that... Let me tell you what I'm asking. I want someone that what you're about to share is very deep so that when I speak with you, I can use it to help other people all around the world. You know, there's someone, yeah, okay, there's someone, a lot of people are waving their hands for somebody. What, what are they waving their hands for? What? I, I didn't want to do this to you. No, even the way you are saying I'm not. you don't look discouraged. You're like, <laughs> you don't look discouraged. You look like, you look, you look like, you know, 
You? Are you raising up your hand? Yeah, give me the microphone. Yeah. Um, okay, um, I've tried not to you know, share this. Okay, and you might get to the media, okay, because of some reasons, and but I'm going to say it. Because last Sunday I, I almost opened up and all of that. So I work um, with a company that I have, I have a um, relationship with the owner. And because we started off on negative um, note, so it affected literally everything. Okay, to the point where everyone who knows him, I'm not going to mention him because he's, he's a popular person. So anybody who knows him could tell him that this guy literally is the best person I've seen you with in over a decade. But to him, is never the case. So where we work, okay, I'm meant to um, present budget for business growth and all of that, and it always gets turned down because of how we started. So you end, he, he ended up bringing you know, new people to play that role, and after a month, they leave, because they can't play it like I do. Like you do, yeah. Yeah, and it keeps going. So on. what is discouraging you now? When you are very good at something, and they don't see you are very good at that particular thing. They don't see thing. your value. Exactly. Wow. Wow. That, that's very powerful. So how long have you stayed there? Four years. Four years? Yeah. It doesn't see your value, but it has given you a job and paid it for four years. Underpayment for four years. What? Underpayment for four years. What? Underpayment for four years. Well, I don't know he's underpaying you. Did, did you see the power of... Did you see what I taught you? What I taught you was this. Discouragement will focus on what is not good. Joy will focus on what is good. I said to him, he's been there for four years and he's been paying you. He cut it short and said, it's not paying me, it's not paying you. Is he paying you or not? Yes, he is. He is. The reason why is that I don't think is it. I don't think the man is stupid. If he doesn't see your value, he will not pay you. It may have other issues. I'm not disposed to doing that. So you have people you work with that cannot express how valuable you are, and maybe it's a strategy to underpay you that he doesn't want you to know you are valuable, so that you don't leave, and he can underpay you. But if someone keeps you for four years, pays you all these millions every year. Actions speak louder than a voice, so you are valuable. But now, there's a way it reacts to you. There's a way it reacts to you. And, 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 and I know, you know, there's a way it reacts to you. The, the reason why I'm, that, I'm just thinking, I'm thinking as a person, that if I keep a staff for four years, there must be a reason why. Why are you not working for free? But now, you feel those courage because all of your effort is not seen that way. So what I would say to you is this. You, like I said, you, you need to control your focus. What are you learning in this situation? Nothing? Tell me. Uh, hold the microphone. I will tell you, I will tell you what you're learning. You're learning how to deal with a tough boss. Yes or no? Okay. Oh, you're not learning that? Of course. Of course. What? Yes. Of course. You're learning that. Then... How is that improving you? That's expanding your emotional capacity. The second thing is that you yourself, are you not learning patience? Sorry? Are you not learning patience with all you're going through? My patience level has actually grown now than it was before. It has grown? Yeah. That's what I'm saying now. Who taught you patience? The process. Uh, you should pay your boss. <laughs> the reason why is that all these things you learn, when you get another job, and you bring it there, what would they say about you? What were you trained? So, I understand it's underpaying you, but as it's underpaying you, you are getting much more for yourself. Actually. So, you're already underpaid. So, by the time you get the right pay, your pay will just skyrocket. Then you're learning how to manage a very difficult person. Then you know all the people that come and go, come and go, and they say you are good. Everywhere they go, they keep talking about you. 
that there's this guy we work with. I don't know why he's there. They keep talking about you. What I'm trying to do is this over time is that you're discouraged because you're focused on how badly he's treating you. You're focused on what, how you're underpaid. Then let me tell you something that will shock you. Do you know if the man has a personal problem that makes him behave that way? You will never know. That might just be his response to his own personal issues. And he's not going to tell you that. Never will he tell you that. I once met a guy that is impotent. And um, the way I met him was that he's got, the girl he wanted to date was like, he never commits. They've been together for two or three years. He likes him, likes her. And, you know, so the girl was like, I don't know if there's something wrong with me. And why can't he just commit to me? Why can't just, let's just start dating officially? Let's, and he will just talk, 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 talk. So when I spoke with the guy, and the guy said, Pastor, I'm actually impotent. I just don't know how to tell her. One of the things is that we use we interpret things in a very negative way. So the girl was thinking there was something wrong with her. That was why she could not what? Commit to her. Meanwhile, the guy not commitment was a way of protecting what? Himself. Praise God. When someone dies, because this is something you cannot change. When someone dies, you cannot change it. How do you deal with it? Choose the time you have to focus on the good memories you have of them. Choose the time you have to what? Focus on the good memories you have of them. Praise God. Amen. So my brother, my brother, hey, my brother, I know it's a tough place you're in. I know it's a tough place you're in, but I will consider it as a training ground. And what I know is that after training comes promotion. Yeah. I would the reason why is that if you don't change it's either a training ground or is a place of abuse if you think of your office as a place of abuse your best will not come out you would be very you will be very unhappy if you think, think of it as a training ground you will endure the training and pay for the next level all right thank you, thank you. praise God there's a girl that was trying to wave and jump and you know yeah, purple in, in pink, yeah? Please just hurry because we're behind time, yeah? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I'm working in an, in hospitality organization. Okay. And I'm a GSA. What's and a GSA? Guest service agent. Okay. And everybody I started the job with in February 2020 to had left i'm the only one there with the night manager okay and they don't want to give me the supervisor and it's not like i'm craving for it but they don't want to give you supervisor role right yes okay and they know i'm good everybody says that i'm good and okay they're underpaying yeah me. and they're underpaying you yes so presently now i'm assuming the role of a supervisor but they don't want to give it to me okay and it's so discouraging every day i cry if you go to booking.com my name is there, blessing is this, blessing is that, but they are underpaying me for the work that I'm doing. I've gotten other jobs that they want to pay me higher, but I don't want to go because the timing is good for my classes. Because what? The timing is good for my, I have off days that is good for my classes. Ah. And it's really, really discouraging. Good. I see the problem you have, but I also don't see the problem you have. The reason why is that you are gaining something. What are you gaining there? Tell me, blessing. The time. Yeah. Why not focus on that time? When you finish this, your school in two years' time, what will you be again in the future? A great, wonderful entrepreneurship. So, why not focus on that? You know, I've told you something, and I will say it again. In life, good and bad always happens. What you focus on becomes your atmosphere. On one side, you say that they're not paying you well. But on the other side, you say, I'm learning that this is working for me. So it's even an opportunity to work here. Maybe the person you're working for knows that that time is working for you. That's why he's not paying you. It's okay. Why? After some years, you will leave. So you remember what I said? 
I said that the way to change discouragement is to change what you are what paying attention to what to. So what do you pay attention to now? What if I were you? I just go and do my wedding gown, do a picture, and hang it somewhere. So every time I feel angry, I say, "Well, I'm doing it for this." So I'll be focusing on the I'll be focusing on what I'm doing it for, and that's it. I'll be focusing on the body on the wedding gown. So you are focusing on what they are not paying you. Focus on the wedding gown. The reason why is that sometimes the things that discourage us just like the election brother said just like he said the things that discourage you is not something you can change by yourself if it's not something you can change change what you can focus on is that okay nobody can say not to focus if you cannot change something change what you can what focus on praise god hallelujah hallelujah praise god can we pray all right let's stand on our feet and pray Come on, stand up. Come on, stand, 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 stand. stand. You need to play the part. I know you are, yeah, I know you, are, you because you need to stay focused now. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's pray. I want you to stand, stand. You're not standing. Let me tap him to stand. Yes, you're not standing. Yeah. So change what you're focused on, right? All right. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for your word. I'm praying for everyone that you give us the discipline to be able to put our minds on what is possible and working in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bible says that we're troubled, but yet not cast away. Two things. We're focusing on not the castaway, but not the trouble. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right.